Hey, this is Carlo of 4GQTV here. If you guys could introduce yourself from left to right. I'll start. <laughs> My right, <laughs> your left. left. I wasn't sure. Stage <laughs> left or house left. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jay Rincon, and I play MD5. Hi, I'm Umberly Gonzalez, and I play K Bass. D. Bradley Baker here, I play Nix. So I'm really excited for this game to come out, and I think it looks phenomenal so far. So, um, going from left to right again, the question I would have is, how did you relate to your character? Did you draw some inspiration into your character? Did it feel like, like an extension of yourself? Absolutely. I mean, um, I think Andy Five and, and I have uh, a lot in common uh, in, in, in enough ways, and I definitely leaned into that in, in helping bring Andy Five to life. Um, it, I don't, you, you, you can't help but uh, put a little piece of you into any performance that you give. Um, this one was so fun to do so and to, to, to dive into that, into that world and into his mind. But yeah, of course. Yeah, I think from even the initial audition, uh, there was something in the character where I felt her wittiness, her charm, her charisma. Uh, she's, you know, when she sees an opportunity, she seizes it. And I think naturally a lot of that, I think I brought to the table and why, you know, when they first saw my audition tape, they were like, oh, there's something in that. And, you know, they kind of kept me around uh, for the months and months of uh, the auditioning process. But after I got to know who she is and got to know her background and where she was going in her hero's journey, I definitely saw a lot of myself represented, um, especially where she comes from and, and why she does the things that she does. Um, I can't talk too much about it, but I there's, there's answers I could give that I know will come into play, but I have to say that I think me and Kay are very similar. Um, I think one of the major ones is, you know, she teaches me a bit more um, setting up for yourself and being more fearless and I've taught her to be more vulnerable and have heart. So we kind of help each other out in that. <laughs> I I relate to Nick's in, 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 in kind of to a scary degree. I, I, I'm, I'm like this weird little creature that only partially understands what's happening around him, but you tell him to do weird things and he'll just happily run off and do them. And then that's really all he knows. He just does his funny little task and then moves on to the next odd little task. I really relate to that in my life. Perfect casting is what we're saying. <laughs> we are a droid, a scoundrel, and a creature. <laughs> so prior to getting the character, did you study any other characters in the Star Wars universe to prepare yourselves? Yeah. I mean, I think that, I mean, being a droid, you, you'd be <laughs> foolish not to you know, do your research. It's, it's also in the writing. I mean, there, there is a, um, there's a cadence and a, and a humor to them that is similar, whether, you know, whether they're kind of, uh, a colorful character like C-3PO, or if you're, uh, you know, a dangerous or deadly character like Mr. Bones, you kind of, they all still have that, that sardonic approach to them. There's that droid sound. So that was the first place to, to, to start with the research. Um, and then uh, beyond that, it's it's in the writing. I mean, they've done such a great job of of creating the character and showing you everything, showing me everything that I needed to see to start with. I mean, the first time I saw the image of ND five, you know, with the duster and the trench coat and and in action, oh my gosh! I mean, that's a, that's a wonderful starting line, you know. So, well, when I found out that I was going to be in Star Wars, the first thing I did was watch the movies again. And uh, just looking, obviously, for inspiration, I think we've seen scoundrels in the universe, but not a lot of like female representation within that specific area of the underbelly of this galaxy. So I knew that although there was going to be inspiration, that it was going to be a completely new take on it. So I was excited for that because if they cast me, it was for a reason. So I also had to trust that what I brought to the table in the script and bring their words and their vision to life, I was going to be guided. And I, you know, I just had to remember the tonality when it took place, you know, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, and also going even further back, which is she only knows Canto Bite. She doesn't know what's out there. So it, kind of making her this like secluded version of what a Star Wars character would be in that era. Uh, so it was interesting that I was kind of diving into a whole new world and hopefully be aided in that yeah i think it all it really came up naturally especially having 
co-stars and the team and the directors where they go, oh, you can't go there because this is happening or, you know, you're being offered this choice and then you kind of, you mold as you go. Um, but it very much still feels like you're in the Star Wars universe, the words, the ambiance, the characters. So, yeah. Absolutely. I started researching my role about 48 years ago. <laughs> When I first watched Star Wars and kept watching Star Wars. And uh, these days, actually, I find it very useful to watch a lot of nature documentaries to get ideas for how animals behave and, and what they do and how they sound. It's also helpful to have a dog. A dog is very relatable in the way that Nix is in a lot of ways. Um, and in terms of behavior and movement and sound and what's processing up here. So those are all things that kind of come together for me in creating a little critter like Nyx. And are you guys fans of the set of the Rebels? <laughs> are you asking Kay or me? <laughs> Kay wants nothing to do with either. <laughs> well, that would be a good idea. I mean, Stay Rebels are pretty cool. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. She was wisely here. I, I think I'd be on the side of the Rebels. Yeah. Yeah. I got to go Rebels because Rebels ride Tauntauns. <laughs> There you go. Yes. That's <laughs> specificity. Sorry, did we disappoint you? He's like, I'm sick. <laughs> I'm just a, I'm just a fan. Know, what are you, a Sith Lord? What are you, a Sith Lord? Imperials, you know, I just... hey, who are we talking to here? Yeah, yeah player, what Star reputation Sith do I want right now? <laughs> You're like the <laughs> nicest Sith Lord. That's how it starts. <laughs> I try. I try. That is how it starts. Yeah. <laughs> what was one of the most challenging aspects for you guys? Uh, and voicing the characters. Any challenges that you face? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, there are limitations uh, uh, in being a droid, whether it be, you know, your physicality, the way that you move. So you start there. Um, ND5 in particular is a droid a few words. He doesn't just carry on the way C-3PO would or how R2-D2 could just beep to no end. And we know exactly what he's saying. So, yeah, you, you had to choose your moments. Uh, you, you, they were chosen for you wisely and you had uh you know one word or just a nod or body language of some kind to say a lot of things so that right there uh it is a challenge and it was a great challenge it was wonderful yeah i mean especially because we didn't just voice them we also did full body motion capture you're wearing these suits for me uh you know you didn't have a face or you have a face yeah, but it wasn't face. recorded i had to wear the hmc uh helmets which um, they capture your facial recognition on top of wearing the suit. Um, I have to say that being in that for hours and hours every day, like if we shoot for a week straight, um, I think there's a physical challenge in, in embodying the characters themselves, um, you know, working with stamina and all of that. But, you know, you get sweaty and itchy and it's like, it's this whole experience. You're wearing this exoskeleton and becoming a new character while also ignoring the fact that there's a camera in front of you and you're wearing all this. So there's a lot of suspending your disbelief and, and really allowing yourself to live in this world where there's no sets, no makeup, no costumes. You're in a volume that you're being recorded. Mm -hmm. There's cameras all, all around you, but they're like ghosts because they don't, they're not wearing the suits. So t technically in the world of like film and TV, this is such a niche spot where it's like theater meets film meets, I don't even know, like AI. But um, that to me is also part of the fun. I love doing motion capture and um once you wear the suit you feel like you become someone else like it's like mortal combat like i don't even know and you're just like oh i feel powerful yeah it is it is yeah we yeah. go and we rom they tell us okay we're picking up all the sensors it's yeah. game time and it truly is i mean it's, it's so much fun regardless of the emotional you know level of yeah. the particular scene. and when it comes to vo i think um the hardest part is I mean, your hours in the booth, and I'm, I'm sure you can attest this is your entire world, but there are days where you're just shouting or um, doing like barks, but in all different things. So it's like, okay, now you're in stealth. Now you're in conversation. Now you're on the speeder. Now you're sneaking around. Now you're just conversational. So having to do the same lines over and over again, Good different reputation, takes. Poor reputation. Yeah. So there's a lot of like living the same moment in, in very different versions of the point of view of the character or where you are. Um, and it's like, hours on end, weeks on end, especially, you know, I've never been the lead of a game and I realize how much work that is. Um, it's been two years of me just like being KBS 
Yeah. Yeah. It's a very deliberate and deconstructed process mm -hmm. that plays out over years. Um, that's finally woven together by all of the technical artists that put this together in, in this seamless world that you get to jump into. That's, that's really cool. But from an actor's standpoint, we get into acting because we like to act with other actors <laughs> doing a scene and telling a story, you know, usually starting like with a play or a musical where the whole story plays out. But this is like more like building a movie where it's, it's made chunk by chunk, bit by bit in all these different realms, um, in all these different studios, and then finally is woven together by the powers that oversee. Yeah, it's very, it's very, it's very unusual and interesting. All right, well, I have one last question. And it's a fun question. We, we do it for our channel and our audience, okay? So it's, a, it's really an icebreaker question that I ask at the end. And everybody that watches our channel wants to know these questions. Pineapple and pizza, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Sure. <laughs> wow. He's like, uh, uh, yes, uh, savory uh, and sweet are such a great combination. Our tongue has so many sensors. Why not overload it with cheese and sauce and sweetness and maybe sometimes a little spice? Why wouldn't you want yeah, it all? At once? And I'm not fighting the history of what a pizza is. Yes, I understand. So, I mean, you can go ahead and have that argument while I'm eating a slice of pizza. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, after talking about it, I want my, my pineapple on the side. But I like, grilled or not grilled? <laughs> oh, grilled. I'll, I'll take it grilled. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I, yeah, I don't think I've, think I've ever ordered it, though. I, I have. Yeah, I've never with, ordered it, though. No, I've never just gone and said, hey, I want the pineapple pizza. Right. Oh, I do. Yes. Okay, there you go. So yeah, that's it. It's one of my favorites. Yes, yes. I guess that's like, sure. a, like a triple yes. Wow. Yeah. This is shattering. Shattering news. <laughs> hey, I'm not Italian. I'm really sorry. Is that right? I mean, I, I'm assuming it was... Invented yes. in Italy, I'm but gonna, sometimes it's guess. like a weird thing. Were pineapples invented in Italy? <laughs> if they were, then this whole thing's over. Because they definitely need to have pineapples. There you pockets. go. <laughs> we need to debunk this. <laughs> we need to ask a pineapple. <laughs> well, thank you guys very much for your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Sweet. Uh,